Leir Accordia August Tawfoil Tirote. Welcome to be my guest with me, Mary Honan, on Lear Media TV, supporting the Samaritans Limerick and Tipperary, Claire's Wish Foundation in Limerick and Deal Animal Rescue in West Limerick. And I'm truly, truly honoured today of all days to have the Honorary Consul for the Republic of Serbia, uh, Mr. Zivko Jaksic, on my show. He's, um, he's accredited here to Ireland. Hello, um, Mr. Jaksic. How well, are you? Good evening, Mary. Very well, thank you. Thank you for having me on the, on the programme. Um, well, we're absolutely, truly honoured. Um, uh, I'd say, you know, Serbia is such a small country. It's only a little bit bigger, 10% bigger than Ireland. Um, you've probably never been uh, uh, in the media so much or we've never heard so much of Serbia as we have in the last couple of days because of the Novak Djokovic. Well, unfortunately, um, uh the West has heard an awful lot about Serbia 30 years ago. That's right, yeah. During the civil wars in Croatia and Croatia. Herzegovina, which were described as Serbian aggression, but there you are. That's that's the way... That's the media again. That's, that's media, that's Western politics. And uh, thank God we are over that period and uh, Serbia has progressed by leaps and bounds. Uh, we are very thankful that now with the current government under President Vucic and uh, the Prime Minister Brnovic, uh, Serbia is, is experiencing, even in the COVID situation, a very high growth rate in the economy. Excellent. So things things are moving well. Um, as it, it's... It's predominantly um, uh, a Christian Orthodox. It is, yes. Uh, um, with only 5%, I believe, um, yeah, Catholic. We have, we have, and, a, we have yes. a sizable major, uh, minority of Muslims, particularly in the south, southeast of Serbia. And there are minorities, Croatians, who are obviously Roman Catholic. Yeah, 5%. Hungarians, who are also Roman Catholic. Yeah. So, yeah, but uh, the country is predominantly Orthodox, yes. The, the, which is what, I, you know, I mean, as somebody who finds it, well, you know, we were shocked there not so long ago when the the um, MP in the UK was shot dead and his priest was not allowed to go and give him the last rites, which uh, as, a, as a devout Catholic he was, um, he would have wanted, um, but they, the, the police wouldn't let the priest near him. I was shocked before we even start about Novak Djokovic that when he was in detention in the um, hotel, um, that he wasn't allowed um, his, um, the, the, the Serbian priest to come to him uh, on, on what was um, uh, Orthodox oh, Christian, uh, Christmas yeah. Day. I was well, I was shocked about that. Uh, yeah, I mean the, the the Serbian parish priest of Melbourne actually issued a statement that he's been allowed to visit people in hospitals and prisons and so on, and he himself was shocked that he wasn't allowed to visit Novak in the detention in hotel. But uh, then, in fairness, uh, the regulations regarding that. Uh, quarantine hotel that nobody is allowed to visit so I yeah suppose. but it but but with with all you it, it actually brought highlighted um another situation was the the inhumane conditions that many of the people inside in that um premises um are under some of them i believe for nine years that probably wouldn't have been um heard of no. Um, apart from their their own supporters or their own protesters, sure. nobody really knew about that until Novak Djokovic situation highlighted it. Yeah. I mean, there's, uh, I know uh, uh, of a young uh, Iranian man who has been there for nine years. They can't deport him back to Iran because they know that his life would be in danger. Danger. And at the same time, they're refusing to give him political asylum. So I don't know what it says about Australia. 
<laughs> but, you know, I mean, I don't know what it says about any country that will leave somebody in limbo for nine years. If you if you don't fit the criteria to be um, uh, brought into a country, then surely you should be sent back. And if you know that sending back somebody to their own country will put them in danger, then surely one should accept somebody whose life is in danger from the country that they have escaped. Well, in that respect, Ireland is much better than an awful lot of other countries. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think any country, I mean, I think any um, most countries will take, um, will have no problem taking in refugees that whom they know are in danger in their own countries. Um, at least any civil society would, one would think. But I suppose before we start on and, and Novak, um, tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you become honorary consul to Ireland of uh, the Republic of Serbia? Well, uh, I left Yugoslavia back in 1955. My late father left Yugoslavia at the end of the war. He was fighting against the communists. Yeah. Uh, eventually, my mother managed to get uh, an exit visa for herself, my sister, and myself. So we came to UK where I finished my secondary school and I studied chemistry and mechanical engineering in Birmingham University. Okay. Uh, I got a job there and uh, eventually that job sent me to Ireland initially for two years to help our agents in Dublin and Belfast develop their businesses with a chemical engineering company at the time. And... Uh, I met my wife here. She's and, such an Irish. Uh, after two years, I decided to, rather than go back to UK, I decided to stay here. Uh, at that time, there was a very, very small Yugoslav community here, less than a dozen people. And then, unfortunately, the war broke out in Croatia, well, in Yugoslavia in 1991. Uh, the media was absolutely full of anti-Serbian uh, propaganda. That's the only thing I can call it. Mm -hmm. So in desperation, I actually started writing letters to the editor of the Irish Times. And in fairness to them, they published a lot of my letters, plus a couple of my Serbian friends as well. And then I got called to a few radio and TV interviews, Morning Island being a program that was on a few times. And this carried on. And uh, eventually uh, I got in contact because I had really no contact with the Yugoslav embassy in London. You know, that as far as I was concerned, it was a communist institution. But then things seemed to change from 91. Okay. Uh, I made contact with them and uh, had a few discussions on the phone with them. And uh, towards the end of 98, uh, they asked me if I would take the post of honorary consul, which I was honored to do. Absolutely. But that didn't happen because beginning of 99, Ireland broke diplomatic relations with Serbia. the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, which was then Serbia and Montenegro. Yeah. And then, of course, NATO bombing took place. So nothing happened then for a while. And then towards um, in the middle of 2010, uh, I was approached by the embassy again to see if I was still interested in taking, as, uh, taking the post which I agreed to, and eventually the whole thing process was finished in December 2010. So since then, I'm the Andrei Council of Serbia, very proud to represent my country and help. Uh, my job, you see, as an Andrei Council, I don't have much administrative work. Okay, yes. Yeah, mainly to answer questions, to a lot of people ring and asking about visa requirements and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, 
Do you have to have a, do uh, Serbians or people from the Republic of Serbia have to have visas to come to this country or is they it? Do, yes. They do, yes. Yeah. They do, yes. Because uh, Ireland is not part of the Schengen Agreement. The Schengen Agreement, yeah. And for the, uh, and for people who don't know, what's the Schengen Agreement? Well, basically, uh, it's travel-free area within European Union. Okay. In fact, all the members of European Union are... Members They're all part of it, aren't they? Except Britain and Ireland. Yeah. Of course, Britain's no longer a member of the European the Union, European but Union. Ireland is still sort of... Because I think, I think because of the border with Northern Ireland, yeah. Ireland is still away. But uh, apart from that, uh, Serbian passport holders have free travel anywhere within the European Union. But you know, um, going say uh, moving to the likes of Djokovic. I mean, one thing uh, I was never—I'll be honest—I'm I'm I'm a, a Rafa Nadal a super fan. I absolutely adore Rafa Nadal. My colleague in the station is a a super a, a, a Novak Djokovic super fan, and uh, we almost come to 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 blows at times over this, but. Now, you know, I mean, I, I, I absolutely admire him as, as hugely as a tennis player. And the more I've learned about him in the last couple of days, the fact that when during the war in... Um, the NATO bombing, yeah. Yeah. Um, he, he, he trained while the bombs were, were going over, over him as a child in an empty swimming pool. That's right, yes. And I thought... My whole attitude, I mean, at one stage, I was a huge fan of his. And then I became, I suppose, an Adal fan. And I've been that way since. But I have to say, I would like to see Djokovic win um, the, U the, the Australian Open. And um, I would like to see him because his determination, if nothing else, um, his, his single-mindedness is, is something that should be admired in anyone. He's very dedicated dedicated to his sport uh, and uh, he he certainly takes share of himself uh, there are a few things that are a bit odd mm. for example I would not agree with his stance on vaccine mm -hmm. uh, my personal opinion is that everybody should be vaccinated but mm. then again uh, he's not the only one who's against it uh, Believe it or not, there are doctors who are against vaccines. So, who's absolutely, and I think I think he's really, uh, from my understanding of him, he's pro-choice. He's uh, pro key, um, discussing your medical condi uh, uh, condition or your medical choices with your doctor, and not with a reporter or with the public. I don't see um, personally. What is wrong with that? Um, I think we've become as a society very, very much like everyone's asking everybody, are you vaccinated or are, are you not? That's never happened before. That's like asking well, somebody, uh, you know, any kind of medical but, procedure. You know, yeah, but think about it. We've never been through something like this before. No. Normally, uh, we know that young children, babies, when they're born and as they grow up, they go through a series of regular vaccinations against MMR. You know, MMR, which is, yeah. And everybody just accept that it's normal. Yeah, we got so that as a child. Never been children. in a situation like this before where there's so many people got sick, so many people died. We've had to endure lockdowns, isolation, and so on. So, yeah, everybody's interested to know, are you vaccinated? <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. My, a, answer, to, my like answer to that is... People ask you, are you vaccinated? Well, my answer to that is I'm triple distilled. Triple distilled. <laughs> but, but, do you know, I mean, it is, I wonder, is it the fact that he grew up um, as a young boy in the mouth, if you like, of, of, of war? Um, and uh, seeing war going over him, seeing, seeing um, bombs going off, and still he was determined to find some little place where he could practice. I wonder, has that actually made him the person he is today? 
uh, whether you know whether you like his uh, antics on the court. Um, I personally like people. I always loved people um, like Goran Ivanisevic and um, uh, every one of the players, John McEnroe, that had that showed their their emotions on the pitch. I don't like people who who are just clinical. I like people to show their emotions. Having said that, Djokovic has been his own worst enemy in many occasions. But do you think that his determination to go for what he really wants comes from a history of growing up, um, uh, if you like, being being well, in the, it, in it, the it, groups of war? I mean, you, can, you can start with the fact that his family are refugees from the Serbian province of Kosovo and Metohia. Mm-hmm. And then growing up and starting life again in, in central Serbia and going on from there. And as you say, the war and the bombing and so on. Uh, I'm sure it has a uh, certain effect on him, but uh, to what extent it's hard to say. But certainly he is very, very determined. He's incredibly determined. I think all three of them in the top three, Djokovic, Nadal, Federer, you know, you could argue they're all three of them are um, the, the top in their own, um, whether it's clay, grass or hard court. Uh, but yeah. overall, one would, I suppose, have to arguably say that Djokovic um, is is probably the greatest we'll ever see, in a, certainly in our lifetimes. But um, and, you know, if he makes it to 21, it'll be uh, the Serbian, the, the 70,000 Serbians in in um, um, in uh, in Australia will probably just go completely insane. <laughs> Everywhere. Um, Not but, just Australia. What was the reaction? Because I know um, I know your president. Um, I know your president, uh, Anna Bernovich. Um, I know that she was speaking with um, Scott Morrison today. <laughs> Yeah. about it and he was giving her all sorts of assurances that it wasn't politically based it would be hard um as an independent person to look at it and think that there was uh, you know i mean he had been given well he went out there with all the good intentions of following yeah. all of the rules it would seem he and he there with a valid visa mm-hmm. now once it was announced that he was going there, there were street demonstrations in Melbourne by people who were protesting against him coming in, which I can well understand. I can understand that because they've been under extreme lockdown. Uh, bear in mind that our elections due in the spring in Australia. April. Uh, Mr. Morrison originally approved the visa for Djokovic. That's right. I no, he wouldn't. And whatever, you know, if they'd simply turned around and said, look, we're cancelling the visa, you can't come in, fair enough. But they allowed him to come in, interrogating him for six hours at the airport, mm-hmm. locked him up in that hotel, uh, decided that, yeah, he'd be deported until such time as he actually applied to the court for, for a review on that. Now, in the meantime, while he was there, there was a Czech lady player That's right. who had gone in on uh, with a visa on medical exemption grounds. She was actually taking part in a competition. Mm-hmm. They pulled her out of there, put her in the hotel and deported her. And, I mean, it was such an obvious attempt to make it look like, oh, we're being fair with everybody. But it was- at the same time, there are 23 other players taking part in tournaments in Australia who are there on visa, medical exemption visas. It, it, became, it became farcical. I wonder how much of it was to do with the fact that Novak put a tweet up before he left saying, I'm going to Australia on a medical exemption. Did they consider it, uh, did Scott Morrison consider it a slap in yeah. Uh, one well, upmanship, um, and yeah, I, I, I must say, I mean, there are there are certain things that Novak comes out with uh, where I think he'd be better off keeping his mouth shut. <laughs> it's, it's simple, you know. He does come out with certain statements, and uh, 
But do you think that that's the type of a person he is, that he's saying to himself, well, this is, oh, who, yeah. I he's, he's this is who I am. I have he's got an exemption. He comes out and says what he thinks, and sometimes without thinking anything. But there, there are so many, there are probably so many people have been left in on the same exemptions. Oh, yeah. And it just, I suppose this has highlighted the hypocrisy of, of politics, if you like. Yeah, politics indeed, yeah. Um, now, I mean, as I say, Scott Morrison has come out and told, um, told the, uh, your, your president, uh, Anna Bernovich, that it, that it wasn't. Um, but do you think... Or can you say whether you think that it will affect diplomatic relations between um, the Republic no, of Serbia? I don't, no, I don't think so in the long run. I mean, uh, in fairness, uh, there is not an awful lot going on, on in a diplomatic sphere between Serbia and Australia because they're so far apart uh, in terms of trade, there's very little. Uh, yes, there is a sizable Serbian diaspora in Australia, but uh, I, I don't think in the long term it's going to make much difference. Did you stay up to watch the, um, the, 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 the court case? Sorry? Did you stay up to watch the court case? No, I didn't. I did. <laughs> I thought for most of it, it was like a foreign language. Um, and the people that were actually streaming it, that I was watching it from, they're, they're a, a group of tennis players who, are, who have a podcast. And bless them, they were so funny. One said, this is the first court case I've ever watched and I'm never watching it again. I thought it would be like the O.J. Simpson trial where it was in English. Now, it was in English, but it was all legal jargon. But I have to say that the judge, Judge Kelly, proud to say an Irish name, uh, Judge Kelly um, kind of simplified the whole lot. He, he seemed to have done his best knowing that the, the, the computer broke down a few times. Their cameras broke down because there were so many stayed on it. I didn't stay on for the I stayed on for an hour, but it went on for seven hours. That's right, yeah. And people stayed up for seven hours watching it. But very early on, um, the judge, within 10 minutes, the judge said, what's bugging me or what's bothering me is, and he explained what was bothering him. And within 10 minutes, he said, what more could this man have done? Yeah. Well, he was referring to the interrogation mm -hmm. that Novak underwent at the, at the airport. And... Uh, I mean, in fairness, the judge found, I, I think the judge found quite correctly that uh, the immigration authorities were wrong in cancelling his visa. It seemed to have been issued uh, quite correctly. And let's face it, you know, uh, no Department of Justice or Home Affairs issues a visa to a foreigner just like that without checking all the facts so you we have to be um make it clear to people who are listening that novak djokovic went through the process of, of filing for a visa application he knew that he wasn't vaccinated so therefore he got a, a, a test and was found to have covid um he applied as somebody who had had covid and w w was therefore um, uh, had natural immunity. His name, along with 26 others, uh, went to the Australian Tennis Association, went through a, a, a medical board um, in secret, um, names and information taken out of it, only relevant details, passed through that, went through a second medical um, uh, uh, panel and see in secret and four of them passed through that medical out of the um, I think 26 or something four passed and all of them were were granted visas from Homeland Security and it was and he went from uh, Serbia to um, uh, Austra Singapore and Australia before it was he was ever told that his visa was being withdrawn. And then he was held in detention 
for six hours, woken up at six in the morning and told to try and sort it out. That was his problem, according to the transcripts of... No. Uh, they weren't giving him an inch. No. Do you know, I mean, that to me, how do they expect him to ring his manager or his agent and also ring his um, ring the Australian uh, Tennis Association at six o'clock in the morning or even four in the morning? Oh, well, he asked, he asked, he asked to be let, uh, basically let sleep till 8.30 in the morning when he could contact his solicitor and everybody else they could. And they just ignored it. As you say, woke him up at six o'clock. Uh, have you anything else to add? No, that's it. Your visa's cancelled. Into the hotel. But, uh, okay, the judge put, put it right. And we'll see what happens next. Because, of course, the immigration minister still have the, has the, the power to cancel the visa anyway. But this is so this is so bizarre from our point of view, I suppose, here in Ireland, that one would think that up to the final, if Novak gets to the final, even then the minister can actually decide to throw him out of the country. That's right, yeah. So he has that hanging over his head for the entire competition. You see, the way it's, the way it's it is at the moment. The Minister of Immigration in Australia can decide who is not going to win the Open. But this, well, he can certainly decide. I mean, OK, look, I mean, I say as a as a Rafa Nadal super fan, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm hoping Rafa will get to the final. But at this stage, because he has been so dogged and so determined, I'd, I, I, I would be happy to see Novak um, win because, it, you know, it would be kind of, I suppose. You'd be saying to yourself, well, Jeepers. In all he's been through, a week of not being able to train, having this worry over his head that any minute he's going to be taken away and um, and he still comes along and wins. You say, well, you know, I mean, do you, what do you think of, say, uh, there's been quite a lot of support from, say, the likes of Andy Murray and um, uh, players like that. Jimmy who actually come out and said that they're... Um, and Nikirios, Nikirios has has been shockingly supportive of uh, Djokovic, whereas in other times there has been, of course, uh, yeah. well, anger between I, the two. I, I think, I think anybody uh, that is involved in sport and loves sport likes to see fair play. And the fair play is to let the defending champion defend his title. Now, if you turn around and say, okay, sorry, go home, what can you do? But, you know, he was he was tested. Uh, this is another thing that I was I was surprised about. He was tested in Serbia and he was tested positive. He was tested in um, the premises that he was locked up in, 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 um, in Australia, and he tested negative. And yet, you know, there's all this, you know, one would think, well, he's negative. He, he can't, he surely can't be a danger to anybody when he's actually negative with COVID antibodies in his system. Well, one would think so. I mean, generally speaking, what's the regulations these days is, if you test positive, you isolate for 10 days. And if you test negative at the end of 10 days, that's it. You're, you're negative. You're free. And, and then if you know, if you, if you, as I say, you know, you look at the testing and um, we had our own minister not so long ago, our minister for the environment who did a test to go to this, the COP26 and he tested twice. I think it was positive. If uh, I stand out. Uh, may stand corrected, but I know he tested positive and he kept going until he tested negative and went and there was furore over it. If the test is so ambiguous that one can test one minute and, and be negative and another minute can be positive, what's the purpose of it? I don't know. 
I don't know. I mean, PCR tests, I think, is the only one that is 100% uh, certain to give you the proper result. Antigen tests, I believe, can give you both false negative and false positive. So, but there you are. So what do you think will happen realistically? Do you think, um, you know, has it has it had, have you seen, I know you're here in Ireland, but have you seen any um, uh, reaction or, or great support? I would presume that he has got massive support in the Republic of Serbia. Of course. Yeah. Because he's considered a hero to, he to the guy. Serbian people who have suffered a lot. Well, uh, I mean, he's been the top of the ranking list now for nearly 360 weeks running. It's extraordinary. Which is a record. And uh, he's, 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 brought, he's brought a lot of honour to Serbia with all his wins. Uh, the other thing is that he also does a large amount of humanitarian work in Serbia. And yes. even... It, even in Australia two years ago, if you remember the wild... I was going to say that. He, he gave he, a lot of money for the, for the victims of Australia, of, of the wildfires. Now, I'm not saying that that donation should buy him the right to go there. Uh, but it should, it, should, it, should, it should gain him respect. Just something to just to point out the sort of person that he is. He's, he's always prepared... However rich he is, he's always prepared to help people with the money that he has. And that should be respected. That should absolutely re be respected. And one would think now that he shared the space, if you like, with uh, what I was struck by is the fact that he, um, he, he's, he, uh, he is on a special diet and he wasn't given um, his, his special diet, which I think is inhumane. It's like putting a diabetic um, in, uh, into, um, into a room for five days without their special food. Well, in fairness, now he, he's on a gluten-free diet and uh, the, the Serbian government managed to negotiate that he'd be supplied with that uh, after a couple of days that he was there. Now, I don't know exactly why he's on gluten-free diet, whether it's... Uh, for medical reasons. Or oh, I, I think it's for health reasons. But it's a choice, health, you know, health choice, really. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, okay, you know. But if you haven't eaten gluten for years right. and you're an athlete and suddenly you're put in on a, on a diet, now people will argue, well, why should he be treated any differently? But dear God, I mean, somebody's diet is, is important to them, especially oh, yeah. if they've maintained it for many years. That's right, yeah. And um, but you know, um, he he's an he's an he's an astonishing guy, and the, the as you said, the amount of work he has actually done, the amount of charity work he's done. I would think now that he has been put in with all these um, refugees, that he was probably the perfect person, being the son of refugees, um, to highlight their plight. And he has promised them that he isn't going to forget them and that he's going to do some. I'm, I'm sure he will, yeah. So do you think he'll be thrown out of the country? Who knows? Who There'll knows? be war if he does. The Serbians will go insane in, in, in Melbourne. <laughs> Sorry? The Serbians will go insane in Melbourne. Well, yeah, they will. They'll go insane anywhere, but... Uh... <laughs> Unfortunately, that is something that's in the hands of the... You see, generally speaking, the way I look at it is any, in any civilised democratic country, decision by a law of court is not manipulated by politicians or given to the whims of any particular minister. No, it was pretty. That, it, that, that is Australia. So. It was no, it was pretty. I mean, it's a it's a fabulous country. I have many friends in Australia, and it's a fabulous country. But I mean, when you think back to the wildfires and Scott Morrison 
was on holidays and was reluctant to come back from his holidays during it. And you had Novak Djokovic, um, who was funding um, some of the victims and was was raising funds for for the victims and how quickly as um, uh, as um, uh, it was said uh, the other day, how quickly the media forgets somebody's good when they think they're when they they jump on a bandwagon well you see it's what's out the papers what makes the i mean nikiria said that he said you you media he said you quickly forget the good he did do you know and um i think you know personally he should be left play now it was one in a court and the judge had the judge was fair and he was impartial and he, he followed the letter of the law. And, you know, I think it should be just a line should be drawn under it. But it does ask the question now, uh, why can't everyone with um, a negative or anyone who has been who has tested positive for COVID be allowed into a country if you have the natural antibodies? Well, the rule applies to most countries. If if you've had COVID, you can come in. He's been told now for the French Open that they that he will be allowed in because he's had um, COVID. COVID. So that's the way it should be. I mean, I I personally feel. But um, uh, so, do you enjoy living in Ireland? Oh yeah, I mean I've been here for over fifty years. I'm well used to it by now. <laughs> fifty years, my God, uh, that's a long time to live in any country. You've probably lived here longer than you've lived in uh, anywhere uh, else. Yeah, any, anywhere else. So you're an Irishman. No. Do you consider yourself still? You're obviously a Serb. Very yeah, much. isn't it amazing? We always consider ourselves where we were born and reared, or where we were born. It's, oh, of course you are. I mean, yeah. I mean, I I've lived here since I was five in Ireland. I was born in England. You find you're when you've been born in one country and live in another, you often find that you don't really belong anywhere. That you can't say you're English, you can't say you're Serbian, you can't say you're Irish. You know, you know, you 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 find it. One finds it difficult to slot in at times, um, but you know, uh, it, it's nice to actually embrace uh, both sides in some way. You're you're Serbian Irish. Serbian Irish. All right, I'll accept that. <laughs> huh? I said I'll accept that. Serbian Irish. Well, um, uh, honorary consul Zivko, Zivko uh, Jaksic. Gosh, I actually did okay on that, didn't I? Uh, Zivko Jaksik, Jaksik uh, thank you so very much for being a guest on my show today. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. And uh, we'll have you on again some other time. Uh, God, God forbid that you'll have to be on within well, the next to, week or two. To celebrate Djokovic's victory. Celebrate Jock. We'll go. We'll go with that. Certainly not to celebrate his deportation or to or to commiserate over his deportation, but we'll celebrate his victory. Shindarilesh on Clar. That's the end of the show for today. Until the next time, Lacoon of Day. But while to Gulerchia Kona, Sonis Agus Gra. I wish you peace, happiness, and love. Agus Gade Shivslon. Bye. Bye now.